Hello my friends, you're listening to eBird Online and I'm back with part 2 of my Sam and Citra special. Now guys, I think part 2 gives us both context and understanding of how Sam came to be, for it's in this part that we meet once more Sam's mum. And the phrase that's springing to mind is, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But guys, I've also got a little something special for you, thank you to my subscribers. With a special mention for Joy Webster, Miss Sweet Tooth J, and Graham1976. Because all of these subscribers tipped me off about the fact that Sam's brother is actually engaged to Citra's sister. Wait, what? Yep, that's absolutely right, and we're going to talk more about this at the end of the video. But before we get into all of that, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, if you've yet to do so, and make eBird a very happy eBird. And also, please don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoy the video, it really does help with my analytics. Thanks guys! Right, so without further ado, I'll give you Sam and Citra part 2. So we begin with Citra, and she's talking to production. And of course she's worrying about Sam going to jail right after they're getting married and she wonders what she's going to tell her dad who's due to arrive in the next few days to America. And poor Citra cannot for the life of her understand how Sam could forget something so important as diversion paperwork. Oh Citra, I have a hunch. It's D-R-U-G-S. So yet again, another one of my subscribers has clued me in on a possibility as to why Sam didn't fill in this diversion paperwork and that's GC7214, and she says that sometimes, to submit paperwork, you have to supply a drug test, and so if he didn't feel he could pass that, maybe that's a reason as to why he didn't try and save himself from going to jail. And I have to say, this makes an awful lot of sense to me, not least because he's filled in a million and one forms, i.e. the K-1 visa forms, to get Citra over to the US. So it's not as if he has an aversion to filling in forms and paperwork, so why ever wouldn't you fill in the forms needed to prevent you from going to jail? Guys, there just must be more to this story. There must be. Anyway, the couple are in the kitchen and Citra's cooking. And Sam's bought Citra a rice cooker. And she decides to cook him a very spicy rendang curry. And Sam's feeling rather sorry for himself. He tells production, I can see it in Citra's eyes that she's very worried. She's scared I'm going to go to jail and I have nobody to blame but me. And I don't know what it is about Sam, but I really don't get the I'm really sorry for all this vibe from him. I just don't. Citra, listen to this and listen good. If you're to become Sam's wife, you're going to have to deal with the fact that Sam is a one-man emergency. He's going to lurch from problem to problem and you'll more than likely have to pick up the pieces. And as she's cooking, Sam asks her, um, Citra, after what I told you yesterday, what are you thinking about us getting married? And guys, I have my fingers, toes and everything else crossed that she's going to say, Sam, I'm going back home. But instead, she lets me down, as so many others have before her. And she said, you know, I've been waiting two years for my visa and Sam have decided that I'm going to be with you. Oh, good Lord, here we go. And to say Sam's relieved is an understatement. It's like a 2,000 pound weight off my shoulders hearing that she's still going to stand by me. Welcome. <laughs> Sorry, baby. I was scared to death of the woman I love. Like, I thought maybe there I lost her for a second, but there's just no words to explain it. Oh, Sam, the eBird's got a few words to explain. Idiocy, stupidity, youth, blind faith. They're just a few words. And I do have many, many more, but I don't like to flirt with demonetization. But Citra does have a little something for his ass. Thank the Lord. She said, you're going to have to explain to my dad. And she tells production, my dad's a cop. And sometimes he can be quite harsh. But guys, then she tells Sam, whilst they're talking to production, the following. If my dad take me back to Indonesia, our relationship is over. No, I get them. So, um, oh wow. So basically... As far as I'm concerned, what Citra's saying is, it's not her decision. If her dad decides it's a no, then it's a no. Guess what, guys? I think her dad's going to decide it's a no. There's hope yet. She can be saved. And as Citra continues cooking her rendang curry, she tells Sam, I'm going to make it extra, extra spicy by way of punishment. When really she should be just going back to Indonesia by way of punishment. But hey-ho. And so the next time we see this couple... They're on their way to a showdown meeting. And guys, Citra's going to meet for the very first time Sam's mum. 
And then Sam tells us via production that he hopes everything is going to go really well. Uh, Sam, <laughs> have you met your mum? I have, and I think it's decidedly unlikely. And so Sam explains to production that he and his mother have been estranged for 10 years. And he said during his teenage years, their relationship drifted apart and he didn't speak to her for 10 years. And just recently she's back in the area and they're trying to rebuild their relationship. Then Sam, why on earth, when you have yet to build your relationship with your mother, are you introducing her to your wife-to-be? It can only possibly go wrong. But guys, don't worry, don't worry at all. Sam's got it all in hand. <laughs> he gives the following warning to Citra in the car on the way. There's a reason I keep my distance from my mother, though. So just, it goes fine, fine, but just... Told you she's kind of crazy. She'll be nice and sweet to you, but don't judge me off her. So, guys, what's really weird to me about this whole statement he made to Citra is the fact that he didn't elucidate why she's weird, what problems they've had, and what she needs to watch out for. So, he's warning her that his mum's a bit off key, but he's not really saying why or what she might need to expect. I find the whole thing very strange, but it's typical Sam. The information he should be giving, he doesn't bother, because he just bumbles through life thinking, everything will be okay. Bat it to the back of my mind and, yeah, we'll be fine. Sam, you won't be, and more importantly, Citra, neither will you. But worry not, guys, worry not. We've been treated by Sam, as to some of the things his mother might possibly say. And they're as follows. She might start saying, Muslims don't wash up or they don't use toilet paper. She might start saying obscene things. I really hope she doesn't. Sam, if this is even a possibility, you shouldn't be bringing Citra to meet her within the first few days of her arriving in America. That's far too much pressure for anybody. And if anyone thinks that this is the right course of action, please come and see me at the end of school today, and I'll set you straight. And so then Sam lets us know that his mum's a big Christian, but she doesn't bother following any of the pesky rules and regulations herself. And apparently the Ten Commandments. Well, they're for other poor fools, and not for the likes of her. <laughs> She's not interested. But Paul Citra's sitting in the car, and she says, I'm very, very nervous about meeting her. She really doesn't know what to expect. And Citra said, my mum's passed away, so I don't have a mum anymore. And I'd like her to be my second mum. Right, Citra. Um, meet her first. Yeah, that's right. Meet her first and see what you think. And so the couple finally arrive. And Dee Dee, Sam's mum, gives Citra a very warm welcome. And they go into the house, which very strangely has absolutely no furniture whatsoever. And inside, Citra meets Sam's granny. And Citra hands Dee Dee the rendang curry. Guys, this absolutely had me in stitches. Dee Dee didn't know what was in it. And Sam very helpfully said, well, it's made with coconut milk. And Dee Dee said, oh, I love coconut. Um, Sam, you need to tell her about the five hot chilies that are in it. That's the salient point. That's the info you need to get across the line. Guys, Sam really does have a problem ascertaining what's relevant information in any given situation. But before the interrogation began, Dee Dee did come with a couple of jokes. Did you just move here? Yeah. From North Carolina. I did this picture just for you. No. <laughs> <laughs> and Citra tells production, Sam told me to be nervous, but it's going really well. And Sam said, well, I know my mum, and it only takes one comment, and it's Armageddon. So we'll just see. <laughs> oh dear, guys, it doesn't bode well. And the four of them stood around chit-chatting and getting to know each other. And Sam's got some news for Granny. We, uh, we're going to be getting married in a few days, and uh, me and her. Oh. Uh, yeah. And you're invited, by the way. You yes, better be I'll there. I'll be there. Don't worry. Yeah. It is nice, like, I have grandma. You'll, you'll have to get used to me, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and guys, it has to be said, there's nothing I like more than an offhand wedding invite. Oh, you're invited, by the way. Really? Or do I just happen to be standing here when you're talking about it? But anyway, his mum has more pressing matters at hand. And Dee Dee asks, are you going to be having a Muslim ceremony? Dee Dee, you know good and well they are. Sam's not quite sure if it's going to be Jewish, Muslim or Catholic, 
but you know what's happening. And then Dee Dee, who seemed, well, a tad sloshed. What do you guys think? It seems like she's had a gin or two. Come on now. <laughs> she swayed in front of the camera and she said, I'd love to have her in my family, but I have to say, I would love to have her in the family if she was serving the same God as I do. Um, Jack Daniels? <laughs> what God is that, Dee Dee? Do tell. And then the couple explained that it is going to be a Muslim wedding and they're just finding a mosque to do the conversion. And then Dee Dee asked the $64 million question. Straight, no chaser. Excuse the pun. What would happen if Sam didn't want to do it? Would he get to still marry you? Would you just call it off? Yeah, I'm not going to talk to you again, maybe. <laughs> Guys, that was orcs, that was orcs, that was so awkward. Sam didn't help matters by just looking at Citra and saying, what would you do? He should have said, I want to be a Muslim, I want to convert. And so that's not even a question, Mum. But he did put the world of pressure on Citra's shoulders. And if we undertake a quick analysis of Dee Dee's body language, it doesn't exactly say, welcome to the family. And in fact, she's, yeah, she's giving her a fully dilated evil eye. <laughs> it seems as if she doesn't like her. And then Dee Dee tells production she approves of the marriage, but not the whole Muslim thing. And so anyway, the couple make good their leave. But then production decide to talk to Dee Dee once more. Guys, they've got her number. <laughs> they really have. I kind of have some faith going on there that this whole thing's going to turn out okay. I really do. Sounds like you might be praying for something different. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Right, so apparently she doesn't really want this to happen. And I was just about to say, and that's where we leave things for this week. But guys, my subscribers have swooped in to save me once more. And after reading your comments from the first video, it looks like the eBird has got a little bit of researching to do. In a shocking twist to this story, it would seem that Sam's brother has just become engaged to Citra's sister. And yes, a big thank you to Screen Rant and I'll link the article below. And they've managed to furnish us all with the following Instagram story. And so Citra confirmed that her sister, Nafa, got engaged to Sam's brother, Timmy. And she says, I'm so happy for both of them, even though they can be such a pain in her asses sometimes. And she admitted she never thought her sister and Sam's brother would end up together. But she says, I know God has a mysterious way for everything. And so apparently the story goes something like this. Sam was supposed to come to Indonesia alone to get married to her, but the wedding was cancelled. And so instead, Citra's father and her two sisters joined them just before the wedding in Missouri. And so once her sister clapped eyes on Sam's brother, Timmy, they got to know each other, started dating, and now they're engaged to be married. So I've got a couple of things to say about this. Firstly, it would seem as if those girls are perhaps just marrying into this family for green cards. I genuinely did not think this couple would get married because of Citra's policeman dad. It's so hard for me to believe that somebody would let their daughter marry someone with, I was going to say Sam's background, but really Sam's future. And then just last week, in fact, Citra said, I've been waiting for two whole years for my K-1 visa. Well, if that's the case, how could you and Sam have been getting married in Indonesia? It's a completely different visa that you need to marry inside the US as opposed to outside of the US. So are you telling me that Sam has filled in all the paperwork, paid all the money, waited two years, and you're going to upend it all at the last minute and get married in Indonesia? Difficult to believe, I've got to say. It's a stretch for me. It's really a stretch. I've got to say, it does seem as if she finagled her and her family's way into America. I don't believe this Indonesian wedding was ever going to happen. Anywho, unsurprisingly, many people have been accusing Citra and her sister of just being in this whole thing for green cards. And I've got to say, I'm leaning towards that idea myself now. And so Citra once more went back online and she completely denied this, saying, like you really think it's so easy to get a green card just like that. And she listed the costly steps of the K-1 visa process. And she said, it's not easy to bring people legally to the US. And you have to spend a lot of money and it takes a long time. Uh, yeah, that's as may be. But it's the only way to get into the US. 
And it's not really as if it's your money or your time now, is it? What we're alleging is you're only doing this whole thing to get green cards and to get to the US. Nobody's disputing it takes money and nobody's disputing it takes time. And so far, that's all I know. If I get any more info on it, I will definitely let you know. But come on guys, these are Muslim girls from Indonesia and they're marrying substance abusing Christians from America. Something smells rather fishy to me. Anyway, next up I want to have a little word about Sam's mum. Well, Dee Dee really is a card, isn't she? But I have to say, it did look today as if she'd had, I don't know, a drink or two. And she doesn't seem the most stable of characters. She's quite resistant to Sam, converting to Islam. But Sam points out she's not exactly the model Christian herself. I think even though she played nice, it's quite clear that she just doesn't want this union to take place. But from what Sam says, I have a feeling she has pretty much no say. But the final point that I'd like to make is about Citra's plans for her future with Sam. With the news that her sister's going to marry Sam's brother, it really makes me think she's in it just for the green card. And in a couple of years time, she's just going to jog Sam on. And I think she needs to consider what that's going to do to Sam in terms of his sobriety or lack thereof. I don't know, I have a feeling that if she deals him a particularly hard blow, she might well push him over the edge. I mean, he's standing on the precipice as it is. Now Sam is a complete and total nightmare. And on that, we can all agree. But I have a feeling that he hasn't been given the best roll of the dice in life. But for what it's worth, I do genuinely think he's in love with Citra. I really don't think it's a case of quid pro quo. I think there are real, actual, legitimate feelings on behalf of Sam, so it certainly is something to be considered. But guys, as usual, I would like to know what you think. First question, do you think that she's in it just for a green card? Second question, do you think she played Cupid for her sister and Sam's brother? I kind of think she did. I guess from her point of view, it would be really good to have an ally in the United States within that family. But I don't know why, I just smell a rat. And I think that's mainly because she doesn't seem to be massively worried about Sam going to prison. Or the state of Sam's car, or the state of Sam's bedroom, or the state of Sam. Most women would have quite significant questions about Sam. But she appears to have not a care in the world. Very, very strange. So yes, guys, I'd love to know what you think. Put your comments down below. And I'm going to take, I think, a little snoopy snoop over at 90 Day Fiancé Diaries and The Single Life and just see if anything decent's going on there. Also, I'm yet to see it, but I'm going to have a look to see what Sophie and Rob are up to with the arrival of Sophie's mum. So yes, uh, stay tuned. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Like, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you soon. You've been listening to eBird Online, and I bid you good day. Baby, you give me you whip up my appetite. Don't leave me here.